Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to Young, Dumb, and Sober. I'm Allie, and I'm by myself, kind of. It's very uncomfortable for me to reflect. It's something that I do often. Mm. Oh, did you hear how my inflection raised? Usually when people's inflections raise, it means they're lying. That's because I'm lying. I don't do it often. Much like all topics that lead back to sobriety or have a foundation in sobriety, it's very rarely about actually getting fucked up. A lot of the time, it's the actions and behaviors that lead us to want to drink and use and then the actions and behaviors later on the new ones the healthy ones that we adopt to stop drinking or drugging or whatever your addiction might be we all fucking have one let's spill the sobriety tea okay lesson number one for 2019 is that some relationships are better left dead. Why? Why do toxic relationships last for longer than they should? You could argue that they should never really exist in the first place. Once you're in them, they can be difficult to leave for whatever reason, whether that is an addiction to drama and the chaos that comes with it, insecurity issues, and I'm speaking from my own experience. Fear of abandonment, a fear of being alone, a fear of just feeling like you don't deserve better. While they might be illogical, the fears feel very real, especially when you're in the situation and when you're in the experience. The relationship, it was more draining than it was empowering. I felt like I was getting knocked down more than I was getting built up. Those feelings can happen in somebody who is trying to get sober or dealing with mental health issues without a relationship. To have that added pressure, this other entity that inspiring those same negative emotions is just no good. You know, place in your life where like you feel like you're healing in every other aspect of your life yet the relationship or the romantic relationship doesn't seem to be improving or is the only black spot on a general clear light that's the point where it's like to shoot this son of a bitch in the head not the person not the person the relationship and once i did that things really started to change for me. A big part of my sobriety is feeling okay and comfortable in my own skin, feeling good about the connections in my life. But being in a relationship that doesn't support those goals for me is no longer an option. Leaving that in 2019, lesson learned. Thanks universe. Lesson number two, take risks. Obviously, I don't mean risks like try cocaine again recreationally. <laughs> punch somebody in the face and run away and see what happens. That is not a good idea. I'm talking about calculated risks, risks that you have thought through and are a little bit hesitant about, but also have this horizon of growth and potential connected to them. I didn't get sober so I could live some humdrum life and not follow my goals or try and see my dreams to reality or to get sober, have this clear head, and just sit around and not do anything with this clarity would be a waste. I would be stealing from myself. Taking risks for me is difficult, but also really, really fun and exciting and kind of like an adventure. I learned in 2019 that it is healthy to take risks. It can actually be very conducive for my sobriety and my mental health to go against the grain and do things that might actually scare me. Taking those risks helps me have more gratitude for the clarity that I've gained in sobriety. In the past, the kinds of risks that I would take would be dangerous or even life-threatening. Starting this channel, in a way, was a risk. I dedicated time and effort and energy and care into making these videos, doing something new, setting myself up for potential failure. I'm happy that I took the risk because otherwise we wouldn't be where we are now. Young, Dumb and Sober isn't even a year old. We've had so many different opportunities. Part of that has been keeping up with that same momentum of taking calculated risks and saying yes to things that we might be afraid of, which is kind of what the channel was built on. Really. Another risk that I took in 2019 is left the town that I had been living in for like three years. I decided to move back to Jersey City. It, it was a risk in the sense that like Jersey City and New York City were my stomping grounds. This is where I got fucked up. This is where all of my addiction took place. This is where all my drinking took place. Well, the majority of it, it really, 
went everywhere, but really it was it was here. I felt in my heart that I still belonged here and that I wasn't done being here. I no longer connect Jersey City with with partying. I no longer even really connect New York City with partying. A different perspective now. Lesson number three, it is a-okay to change your mind. This is coming from a Libra. <laughs> I change my mind a lot, all the time. What do you want? Um... I don't know. <sighs> and because of that, I have had this learned experience of just not trusting myself if I change my mind. Self-doubt, it's been hard for me to learn to trust that sometimes it is okay for me to change my mind, especially when it comes to bigger things that I've actually thought through and considered and meditated on and spoke with my counsel about. Sometimes it's me realizing that something that once worked for me no longer works for me anymore or something that used to never work for me kind of works for me now. Allowing myself to question previous philosophies or beliefs that I've had and to be open to other ones. And in the past, I was not even open to the idea of doing that. It's okay for me to change my mind. And that's that on period. Can you, can you make an appearance real quick? Abel just came. Hi. I tricked you, I said it was just me, but it ain't. I tricked him too. He walked in and there was a ring light and a green screen behind me, so, hey. What is this? Lessons of 2019 in sobriety. Oh, I um, learned nothing. Well, there's Abel's video. Have fun with her. I'm sure you'll see my video sometime in the next couple years. <laughs> okay. Lesson number four is that there is no other moment other than right now if you guys thought that I wasn't gonna get woo-woo spiritual bullshit up in this video, you were fucking wrong. It's important to remember one thing, you're wrong. When you have one foot in the past and you have one foot in the future, you're pissing on today. It's extremely difficult for me to stay in the moment, to recognize the fact that there really is no other moment other than right now. Experiencing whatever moment you're in, whether it's good, bad, any of that or anything in between. I haven't learned how to do that in 2019. I've learned that it's something I should aim to do and something that I need to practice more in 2020. I'm filming this video, but like half of me is in like 2012 and the other half of me is in 2035. And this was something that I always dealt with even when I was drinking and using. I always wanted to go to the next bar. I always wanted to turn on the next song. I always wanted to have the next bump. Anything that was worth happening was happening later. It was never anything that was happening now and it was nothing that happened in the past either. I always was chasing something and I was like constantly in this state of anticipation of just feeling like the next best thing is around the corner. That way of living, it always kept me wanting. Part of being sober for me now is um, experiencing the freedom from wanting so much, from yearning, from that obsessive compulsive need to have or want or covet. And I haven't been free from want by any means, but I at least can live in more harmony with it. Lesson number five is trust. Just one word, trust. It's actually the um, word of the year that I chose. As somebody with trust issues out the wazoo, this is a difficult word for me to choose. Don't trust no, never trust no, won't trust no, won't trust me. But in 2019, two things happened that allowed me to bring more trust into my life. One is starting Young, Dumb and Sober with Abel because this was one of the first or probably the only creative endeavor that I took on with a friend that, or in, and in general, was born and was nurtured through flow rather than force. Everything that's really happened with Young, Dumb and Sober has been weirdly divine timing. I have no other way to explain it. It's been an experience of trusting that the right people are gonna come into our um, like realm at the right time, which they have, and the right things are gonna happen at the right time, and we're gonna be ready at the right time. Trusting that however this is meant to turn out, it's going to turn out. Going with the flow, falling in love with the process. I've learned to just like trust that things will work out when it comes to this challenge. Second thing has been that I met somebody who has helped me. Um, are you filming this? No, you're uh, filming it. Oh, true. <laughs> so, meeting somebody and falling in love with somebody who trusts me and that I can trust has definitely 
done wonders for all of the things that I spoke about in lesson one about letting toxic relationships die. I just never really even believed that I would ever be in a healthy romantic relationship that had any semblance of trust. So to be in one now is just a really, really nice cosmic validation and cosmic confirmation that trust is the word of 2020. It's not even just trust in another person or trust in a process. It's just trust that everything's gonna be okay. Even if things don't turn out the way that I want them to, like everything is still going to be okay. I'm going to be okay, I'm supported. It doesn't come natural for me. This is very foreign to me. So it's something that I have to work on. It's something I have to practice, but I do feel like it is 100% worth it. Even trusting myself, commit to the decision to be sober every day and that it's something that I want and it's something that I want to live by. Um, that is a level of trust that is very important to me and I hold very dear to my heart. Like I said, trust 2020. That's it guys. Those are my five lessons from 2019 for sobriety and um, the things that I'm hoping to bring into 2020. Uh, as always, please subscribe, hit the bell, like, um, comment below your um, number one or number one, two, three, four, five. I don't care how many numbers that you leave, how many lessons you learned. Name, name your comment, your number one lesson learned in 2019 below. Share this video if you want to share with somebody. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I will see you guys on the other side. Whatever that means. Do 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 do